Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm continuing the 2019 year-end list with my top 10 worst songs of 2019. Now just some general guidelines and rules for this list. For one thing, everything here is just my own personal opinion, so if you happen to disagree, that's perfectly fine. Number two is that to be on this list, the song just had to have been released in 2019. It didn't have to be a single, or it didn't have to chart or anything like that. It just had to be a song. So a track that appears on here could be a song that did happen to chart and was released as a single, or it could be just some fairly unknown, obscure B-side that maybe only I happen to hear, or maybe me and a few people happen to hear, or something like that. The popularity of the song has nothing to do with whether or not it's allowed to be here on this list. As long as it was a song and it was released in 2019, it could be here. So yeah, with those rules out of the way, let's get into the number 10 spot on the list, which is Maroon 5 with Memories. One of the biggest criticisms that the band has faced in recent years has been the fact that their music has shifted more towards a very overproduced, kind of generic sounding form of pop music that's very electronic heavy as opposed to the more natural sounds present on their earlier releases. This is a complaint I've had with the group, but this new track here demonstrates that the shift towards electronics alone really wasn't the deciding factor in this uh, downfall of Maroon 5, because on this new track here, the band is playing around with some more natural sounding instrumentation, but the music is just as bland and uninteresting as it's been on their past few releases. The instrumental here, while it does sound a lot more natural than some of their previous records, it still is really boring, it's very bland, it's really lacking any sort of defining character to it. If I just was played this instrumental by itself and told to guess what artist it was, I would never guess Maroon 5 because absolutely nothing about this instrumental screams Maroon 5 or really any artist out there, honestly. The vocal performance on this thing is also very bland. The song itself is slow, it's sluggish, it feels like a pain to get through because it's just so drawn out. This song is just so boring and forgettable, really. In fact, when I first heard this track, I forgot to talk about it during one of my track review videos, uh, just because I, I forgot it existed. It was that boring, honestly. I listened through the track like I did all the other songs I was going to talk about, but when it actually came time for me to sit down and talk about all the songs, I just forgot to talk about this one, because it was that boring. And I think that alone really says all I need to say about this song, honestly. So yeah, Maroon 5, yet again, with another strikeout here. Uh, with memories. Moving on though, the next song on the list is Blink-182 with Blame It On My Youth, a track that uh, really did not get my hopes up whatsoever for the band's um, studio album that they dropped earlier this year when I first heard it, because this song is just not good at all really. The band on this thing uh, continues to play around with a very overproduced style that was somewhat present on their previous record, California. However, here on this song, it feels like a complete takeover, almost. It's just like any of the more natural, rougher sounds that you might expect from pop punk are completely gone here on this song and just replaced with a very overproduced sound that you might expect to hear more from a band like Imagine Dragons or Maroon 5, who we were just talking about. The verses here on this track are uninteresting. The hook on this thing is also pretty bland and at times kind of annoying too, especially during the whole, you know, blame it on my youth repetitive part of this thing. It's just not pleasant to listen to whatsoever. The vocals on this thing are super overproduced as well. The lyrics aren't anything special. The drumming on this thing, which tends to be one of the stronger points even on modern Blink stuff, is also pretty tame by their own standards. It's just overall a really bland Blink-182 song, honestly, and it feels like the absolute worst of what the band was kind of heading towards with this very overproduced style of music. I'm kind of happy that the rest of this album that this thing appeared on decided to go for a bit of a rougher sound, but as you saw me talk about in my worst albums list, it didn't really turn out all that nice for that record as a whole either. But Blame It On My Youth was easily the low point of that record as a whole just because of how bland and generic and overproduced this track is. Moving on, the next song on the list is the track I've Been Waiting by Little Peep, I Love McConan, and Fall Out Boy. This is a track that I mostly checked out due to the Fall Out Boy's involvement with it, but overall it just did not end up being a good track whatsoever. I can't really blame Little Peep for this considering the fact that this is a posthumous release for him and anything that he has involved with this track was probably something he didn't really have much of a say in when he was still alive. And uh, when it comes to his vocals here on this track, I really don't like them all that much, but again, can't really blame him all too much for that. I Love McConan's part of this song is probably the best part of the track, but even then it's still pretty bland and forgettable. The instrumental isn't super interesting too, and Fall Out Boy's part of this track just feels completely out of place 
uh, would pair it up with everything else going on here in this song. I didn't already care for everything else, but Fall Out Boy just feels so out of place on this thing. It just seems like they hopped on this track to maybe draw some more attention to it and make a few extra bucks off the fact that this is, you know, of course, a posthumous release from Little Peep, and that's just kind of scummy to me. Honestly, even though I'm not even really a bit, a, you know, a Little Peep fan at all, it just feels really gross. Uh, the fact that stuff like this ends up happening with posthumous releases. If there's one thing I would love to see going into 2020, and from that point on, it would just be no more posthumous releases unless they're going to be, you know, tastefully done, of course. And typically, the ones that involve posthumous re uh, releases with, you know, deceased artists and, you know, big name artists that they never collaborated with and things like that hopping on tracks with them, those always tend to be some of the worst, in my opinion, as they just feel really scummy. And this just feels like another example of that, honestly. Overall, there's nothing much to really say about this. All the performances on it aren't too great. The instrumental isn't really all that great either. The lyrics are pretty bland too. And the whole, you know, existence of this track as a whole just feels kind of scummy to me personally. So yeah, I didn't really care for this one. Moving on though, the next track I'm going to talk about is Logic with Clickbait off of his record Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. This is one of the tracks on the record that I felt like really embodied a lot of that album's weaknesses as a whole in just a tight single song, really, because there was a good lot of tracks on that record I could probably have appear on this list, but I think this is the best representative of everything, as it really embodies a lot of the complaints I had with that record. For one thing, the instrumental to this track isn't really interesting at all. It's one of the for more forgettable ones from that record. The hook here on this track is kind of annoying too. Logic's flow isn't super memorable on this thing either. The whole track is pretty short and kind of forgettable, honestly, with how it's just structured and placed in the context of the record as a whole. But the lyrics here on this track are easily the weakest point of this thing as a whole and really embody a lot of uh, what I said when I talked about this record, saying that a lot of the lyrics on it were kind of gross. Uh, for one thing, Logic starts off on this track talking about things like social media and how social media is bad, all of that stuff, how people on social media don't really post the negative parts of their lives and really just focus on the positives and how that can create sort of a skewed image of what that person's life is actually like. Stuff that really isn't all that gross, but is kind of basic, honestly. I mean, I feel like anyone growing up in, you know, nowadays with the internet or maybe someone who even didn't grow up with it but has just lived with it for a good period of time now they probably already know all this stuff, and Logic just kind of repeating it is just a waste of time for everyone involved, honestly. But going forward in the lyrics here, they just get grosser and grosser, in my opinion. He talks about, on this thing, uh, just overdosing on drugs, like Lil Peep, who again, we're talking about here on this list, even though I'm not necessarily a big fan of him, and Logic's treatment of him here on this track, even though he doesn't appear, is almost grosser than the posthumous release from him I was just talking about. As he says here, he wants to overdose like him at times, but then later on, like just a few lines later, says that we should just let little peep rest and just kind of move on from that, which is kind of contradictory, because on the one hand, he's using little peep to kind of further his own message here in this track, but at the same time, he's kind of saying that we should just, you know, respect the dead and just not really get them involved with things. And it's kind of a conflicting message, especially when you consider the fact that the message that he's telling here really doesn't have anything to do with Little Peep or the cause of Little Peep's death. Because uh, as far as I remember, he accidentally overdosed. He didn't do so intentionally because of social media or something like that. It really just seems like Logic is taking a different event and twisting it to fit some sort of message he's trying to tell here on this track, and it just ends up feeling really scummy. If Logic wanted to pay his respects to this deceased artist, that's fine and all, but I think he should have done so in a more appropriate track, or just not done it at all in the case of this song, because as a whole, this track is of course about clickbait, it's about the negative side of social media, and Lil Peep just does not fit into that whatsoever, unless you just go about twisting things, which when you consider the fact that the artist is deceased, it's just kind of scummy, and of course, the track goes on even more, talking about Logic defending himself for being homophobic and all of that stuff. And I'm just not even going to bother getting into that because it goes on even longer. It gets even more problematic. I just don't even want to talk about it even more. It, it just, it's not very good at all, honestly, this track. Yeah. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, it was a record with a lot of really bad lyrics across it. And I think this track really, as a whole, while I wouldn't say it has overall some of the absolute worst tracks on the record, I think it has the highest density of bad lyrics per lyric on the song, I guess. Not that I did any math to determine that, but just 
you know, looking over the lyrics again for all these tracks, that's what it, it seemed like to me, and that's why it's on this list. Moving on, though, the next track that I want to talk about is Thanks I Hate It by Simple Creatures. This is the collaborative music project between Mark Hoppus of Blink-182 and Alex Gasgarth of All Time Low. Two musicians that I quite like, but the combined efforts of these two with Simple Creatures just came together for some music this year that I didn't really care for all too much. And this track was probably my least favorite of all the songs they dropped this year, just because as a whole I think it really embodies a lot of my complaints I had with the two EPs that this group dropped this year. For one thing, the instrumental to this track and the sound of this thing is just very overproduced and generic and uninteresting. There's very little to this instrumental that I find exciting in any way. It's just kind of there for the most part. The vocal performances on this thing aren't super interesting either. Again, they sound really overproduced, almost to the point where both vocalists involved don't really have much distinction between their vocals, even though their vocals normally are pretty distinct from one another. And the lyrics here on this track are probably some of the weakest that the group has penned thus far. Really talking about some of the haters that they have and stuff like that. And uh, they don't really sound like they care all too much about them, honestly. This isn't a super bitter track, which might be what you would expect, but it's not. Like, it almost sounds like they don't care enough about the haters to really write a full song about it, which, I mean, I guess I kind of like the fact that this track isn't super bitter and upset because tracks like that uh, tend not to go over all too nicely, but I kind of wish that the band cared maybe a little bit more about those haters so as to write maybe a bit more of a passionate song about it instead of just kind of throwing a meme in everyone's face with the, the things I hated expression because... It just really feels like the band is kind of combining a half-baked idea with some Gen Z pandering in order to create a song that just doesn't really have much to it. I'm really not sure what else to say about this track, honestly. It's just super forgettable, super boring, and it really embodies a lot of the complaints I had with Simple Creatures as a whole this year. So yeah, it's out of all the songs they dropped, the pick I would have to put here on this list. Moving on, though, the next track I have is a bit of a throwback to last year's list, actually. It is uh, Tom Morello featuring Gary Clark Jr. and Grammatic with Can't Stop the Bleeding. If you don't know why this is a throwback to last year, it's actually because Tom Morello's last full-length record was my worst album of last year, and uh, one of the tracks on it made my worst songs on the list, too. It was overall just a really bad project that mixed together a lot of different sounds and ideas, from rock to hip-hop to EDM music, but never in a very good way. It sounded very clunky, very messy, and this track here I believe is like some sort of leftover from that album, or at least I'm kind of led to believe that based on the artwork for it and the sound of this thing. And uh, because of that, it still for the most part really is just as bad as a lot of the music that appeared on that album. So yeah, this was kind of an unpleasant throwback of sorts, but I will say at the very least that this track would have been one of the better cuts on that uh, record had it been included on there, but it still is a really terrible track through and through. The song starts out with some instrumentation that isn't particularly terrible, it's not super interesting or anything, but it's a fair bit better than the majority of the instrumentals that were actually on the Atlas Underground. However, you do get to a certain point in the track where you get this really awkward EDM style beat drop that just sounds really out of place and weird, much like a lot of the EDM influences on that album itself. It just sounds really out of place and odd on this track too. Really, this track just has a lot of the same problems I had with that album as a whole. It sounds really messy. A lot of the features don't come together in a very cohesive way. Nothing really just sticks together at all when it comes to all these different sounds and genres and ideas that are being thrown together into this musical blender of a track. It's, it's not pleasant to listen to whatsoever. Absolutely nothing about this track comes together to work at all. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much else for me to say about it already. I feel like I've talked about this so much at this point, considering I talked about the album a lot last year, and I talked about it again when I had to review this track during one of my track review segments. I'm talking about it here again now, and it's the same stuff that it's been really since I've been talking about the album as a whole. It's the same problems, really. So yeah, I would avoid this track if you haven't heard it already. Moving on, the next song on the list is the kind of track that normally wouldn't make my uh, worst songs of the year list just by technicality because it's more of a kind of track you might expect to be a sort of interlude between fuller songs on a project, really. However, this was actually released as a single, and because of that, I feel like it's fair to put on a list like this, considering the fact the band thought it was at least fair enough to put it out there for people to listen to 
on its own. I'm talking about the newest self-titled track from the 1975. This is supposed to be the opener to their upcoming album, set to be released later next year. And this track was released this past summer, and I don't really like this track much at all. I can see what the band is going for here with this song, and I do like the message of this track. The message of this song is about climate change and needing to save the world and all that, and I like all that. That's good and all. I appreciate the message of this track, but I really wish that the band had taken really any other, you know, path in actually getting this message across in some kind of composition, because the way they do it here on this song is not interesting whatsoever. Really, this track is just a spoken word uh, track performed uh, by Greta Thunberg, which is, you know, pretty cool and all. It's nice that they got her, her here on this track with the spoken word stuff, uh, considering that's all, you know, what she's all about and all of that. But it's just not very interesting to listen to over and over again, this track with the spoken word uh, style of it. It's, especially when you consider the fact that this track goes on for a good few minutes. It's not like a short minute long interlude or something. It's a pretty lengthy uh, piece and it, it just never gets any more interesting to listen to as you listen through it. Once you hear what's being said here once, you really get everything that you need and after that this track becomes an absolute pain to listen to over and over because while I like what's being said here and while it's being articulated in a very nice way, it's not musically pleasing to listen to at all. And the instrumental that is being put over here is also pretty bland and uninteresting too. Nothing about it really stands out as being super interesting. So overall, uh, while I do appreciate the message of this track, I feel like the 1975 really don't do much with it here on this thing. It almost feels like the musical equivalent of like a retweet or something because really Greta's the one doing all the heavy lifting here on this track and the 1975 are kind of just taking what she says and plopping it down onto a bland instrumental and then kind of packaging it as their own. Almost like with a retweet where you're just kind of taking someone else's words and, you know, just kind of popping it onto your timeline for your followers to see. But, you know, that kind of works in the case of Twitter because that's kind of how just Twitter works and all of that. But for music and songs and all of that, I would expect the artist to kind of make an actual song about the topic that they want to talk about. If the band wants to talk about climate change and all of that, that's great and all, but actually make a song about climate change. Actually take the ideas that are being presented here and put it into something that's actually interesting to listen to. Or if you're going to do something like this, at least have the decency to make it really short and to the point, not several minutes long, because when I listen to this, it doesn't sound like I'm listening to music. It sounds like I'm being lectured, which I get that it's important, the subject matter here. I completely agree with what's going on here with what's being said, but it's just not exciting to listen to, and if it's not enjoyable to listen to, then it's not a good song, and I guess you could make the case that this isn't like a proper song, if you will, because it's just kind of like the opener to their record, but like I said, they released this as a single. For a period of time, this was the only material from this upcoming record that had been released, and uh, what are you supposed to do with this? You listen to it once, and that's it, really. There's not much else you're going to get from it, and I'm not looking forward to having listened to it again over and over again as I listen to their upcoming record in order to review it because even though I do like some of the other singles that they've dropped from it, this track here is just a pain to sit through every single time. Again, even though I like the message here in this song, I really would have appreciated it if the band had got, gotten that message across in any other way other than this one because this just feels both kind of lazy and just uninteresting to listen to. Moving on though from that track, the next song on the list is actually a song where instead of having a good message presented in a really bad way, you have a bad message presented in a really bad way. It's uh, Kanye West with Closed on Sunday, his Chick-fil-A song. I mean, what else is there to really say about this song other than that? I really just summed it up right there. Moving on though, the next track on the list is coming to us again from Logic. It's Lemon Drop off of his record Supermarket. And uh, I gotta really give it to Logic, because not only did he manage to make the list twice with two different songs from two different projects, but he also managed to do so with two songs that sound very different from one another. Really, this song and Clickbait have very little in common with each other. Uh, mostly because whereas that song is a more typical hip-hop track, this song here is pretty much just a Red Hot Chili Peppers ripoff. And um, when it comes to the lyrics here on this track, they're still awful. Uh, that's one similarities, I guess, between this song and Clickbait, even if they're awful in very different ways. I mean, this track opens up with some of the lyrics, Get Liddy, Get Gritty, Rick Sanchez, Get Swifty. And I mean, from there, where do you expect the track to go, honestly? Do you really think it's going to peak after those lyrics? 
No, it doesn't. It just it's all downhill from there. I mean, that those lyrics are a perfect summation of what you're going to be getting here in the lyrics of this track. But even the lyrics around this song aren't the worst part of this thing, somehow. The sound of this thing is the worst part, because like I said before, it's pretty much just a Red Hot Chili Peppers ripoff. Really, every detail of this track feels like it's trying to emulate the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The guitar tone on this thing, and playing style, the bass work, even Logic's vocals and his inflection here on this thing sounds like it's trying to do its best Red Hot Chili Peppers impression, whether it be during the kind of rapped, shouted parts of this track that feel lifted from some of the more aggressive cuts off Californication, for example, or some of the more melodic singing here during uh, certain parts of this track that feel, again, like they could have come off some of the more melodic singles off of Californication, or even parts of By The Way. I, and the fact that I could, you know, specifically point to certain parts of this track and connect them to certain Red Hot Chili Peppers songs or albums really just showcases how much of a blatant ripoff this track is. Like, it's scary how similar this sounds to Red Hot Chili Peppers, but of course it's missing that certain spark that makes a Red Hot Chili Peppers song a Red Hot Chili Peppers song. Mostly the, you know, dynamics between all the band members, and just, you know, the energy, and the personality, and the good songwriting, and even if you don't like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, at least you could probably say that their music is, you know, their own. You could tell a Red Hot Chili Peppers song when you hear one because it has a distinct sound and style to it, but here on this track, uh, you kind of get that same sound and style, but it just feels like a much lesser version of it, mostly because, well, it's not it. It's a, it's a Logic song, but it's kind of a Red Hot Chili Pepper song, but not really. It's it's just a weird mess of a track between the two, honestly. Yeah, I mean, what is there really to say about this track outside of that? The lyrics on this thing suck, the performances just feel like a watered-down Red Hot Chili Peppers cover, and there's no real creativity in this song either, because pretty much everything about this song's personality was just ripped from another artist. So, yeah, what else is there to really say about this song? It, 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 it sucks. That, that's all there is to it. And so we draw to the number one spot on the list, the worst song of 2019, in my opinion. Uh, I gotta apologize a little in advance, because the pick I have for number one is not very climactic whatsoever. There isn't really much of a twist to it here. In fact, it's probably the most obvious number one pick for any worst songs of 2019 list, and I apologize, I couldn't make it any more interesting than that, but honestly, I did not hear a song in 2019 that was worse than this one. Um, if you haven't figured it out already, I'm talking about Little Dicky with Earth. Uh, this track, uh, another environmentally themed song that's pro uh, saving the earth and all of that, which again is a message that I can get behind and that I like, but uh, much like the 1975 track that I was talking about before, this song goes about the complete wrong way of talking about this issue. Uh, in fact, I would even go as far as to say it's much worse than the 1975 track I was talking about before, because at least on that song, the message was very clear, and it was easy to understand, and it was very obvious what they were trying to say, and the fact that the message was being uh, portrayed in a very serious manner. At least the band was able to get that across, even if they weren't able to get it across in a way that sounded entertaining. But here on Earth, it's neither... Uh, super apparent of uh, what the message of this track kind of is or how serious the song is supposed to be. And it doesn't sound very good either. This song sounds just terrible, honestly. Lil Dicky's performance on this song is just terrible. The number of featured artists on this thing really don't add anything to this track other than just kind of like existing. They almost feel like they're just there to bring a lot of attention to this track. And it almost just feels like another one of those like songs made to raise awareness for something with a bunch of big name artists involved with them. The only difference is that in the case of this song, Little Dicky is the core artist of the track and I guess the leader of the pack here, which uh, I don't know whose idea it was to make a song like this, uh, but whoever's idea it was, I don't know why they would pick Little Dicky of all people to be in charge of this considering the message of the song is one that should be very serious because the issue is very serious, but they pick an artist who's essentially like a comedy artist and a joke artist. Uh, at least with Freaky Friday, that was on my number one spot last year on the list. At least that song was trying to be humorous. I mean, it wasn't, but at least it was apparent that they were trying to make that song funny. Whereas with this song, you can't even really tell if it's supposed to be humorous or if it's supposed to be serious or not, because they have a joke artist playing a serious role, and it just ends up being a big mess, because certain lyrics on here are kind of comedic, but at other times, the message of the song is supposed to be super serious, and 
it just does not mix well at all. If you're going to make a song with a big, important message that you want to be received by a lot of people about an issue as big as this, don't make it a joke song. I feel like that should be really obvious, but apparently it's not. Like, I get that the intentions behind this song were good, but when the presentation of these intentions is just so horribly uh, misplaced, and the performances here on this track are just so terrible, I, I almost really can't even give you any credit for having a good message to your track, because that good message is difficult to get across, and this song is just essentially a joke at that point, and honestly, that's what this song has become, really. You can't go anywhere without mentioning this track without it being really... A joke. The song has been panned pretty much by everyone out there, like I said before. It's a really obvious pick for number one on the list for that reason. There were jokes about how we just deserve for the world to end at this point, because if we make something this terrible, we just deserve it, and I guess that kind of makes sense too, because yeah, this song is honestly pretty terrible. It, it, when, when that's the case for your song, then you know you've really messed up, especially if you're trying to do something serious with the message of the track. So yeah, I mean, there's really not much else to say about this song other than that. Yet another example of a song with a really serious uh, subject matter it wants to talk about, but just misses the mark completely when it comes to figuring out how to talk about it. Instead, it almost comes across as a joke. So yeah, I know, really obvious number one pick, and I apologize to anyone who was except, you know, expecting something maybe a bit more exciting and unique, but... Honestly, I didn't hear a song worse than this one this year, so I can't really in good faith put a song above this one on the list. And with that said, that concludes my top 10 worst albums of 2019 list. Again, this is just my own personal opinion, so if you happen to disagree with any of my picks or the placement of any of these picks, that's perfectly fine. In fact, feel free to leave your own thoughts on any of these songs in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you also leave your own list of your own worst songs of 2019 too. I greatly appreciate seeing that as well. And while you're down there, make sure you also leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content. Things like album reviews, track reviews, things of that sort. Of course, we're in the middle of our 2019 year-end list, as I said before. So if you want to see those, I have a uh, link in the description below to the playlist on my channel with all of my lists, including the 2019 year-end list. You can check out the ones I've already put out on there. If you're watching this video in the future, they may already all be out. So make sure you uh, check that out if you want to see like my worst albums for example that one for sure is already out um or maybe even my best albums best songs eps all of that stuff if you want to see my thoughts on all of those things make sure you check out that playlist uh, but yeah with that said thank you once again and stay golden